In a small and beautiful town at the foothills of a mountain range, our hero, the Class 9 Archmage Ellison, has built his restaurant. He cries tears of joy upon completing the construction as he recalls how life has treated him in the past few years. Fifteen years ago, he was a lonely loser in modern-day Korea and a wannabe chef. He attended a culinary school so that he could open his own restaurant one day. But Truck Kun had other plans for him. One night, as Ellison was returning home, Truck Kun sent him to another world, and Ellison was shocked as he saw the unimaginable here. He realized he was sent to a fantasy world as he saw magicians and knights fighting against a fire-breathing dragon. Ellison wet his pants when suddenly a man told him to stop staring at the dragon and evacuate with other civilians if he wanted to live. Even though he had no idea what the hell was going on, Ellison followed the man and asked him about this place. He learned that this was a town called Grake, located on the outskirts of the Luvern Empire. Ellison panicked as he learned that the Empire was at war with dragons, and he felt that he was going to die soon. However, he decided to adapt to this new world to survive, and he wants to put the chance that Truck Kun has given him to good use. He thought that since he was in another world, he didn't need to go to college or enlist in the army, so he was happy. But then something occurred that changed his thinking. A messenger from the Emperor came to the refugees, telling them that the mercenaries have fled and the knights are quickly losing. That is why the Emperor had decided to trust the fate of his country to common people with no combat training whatsoever. Ellison was taken aback by how eager and enthusiastic everyone was to join the war against the dragons. Ellison realized that the fate of a Korean to join the military has not left him even after coming to another world, and he was enlisted in the army. He was forced to go through the hard training and wish a that he lost his life in the accident with the truck. One day, an officer told Ellison that his magic potential was quite high, so when he leaves the training ground, he will be assigned to a magic unit. As Ellison ate the shabby food, he thought that being a magic user was better than running at enemies with just a sword. He was disgusted by the food, but other people thought it was better than their daily meals, and he realized that if this is good, then he is the best chef in this world. He thought that if he opens a restaurant here, it is bound to be a great hit. With that goal in mind, he began to toil hard. He trained his body and then practiced magic, hoping that his enlistment would be brief. While he had hoped for it to be two or three years, he ended up fighting in the war for 15 long years, and that rattled his soul. Back to the present, as Ellison is shedding tears about his long service, a woman walks to the restaurant and she is grossed out by his disgusting crying face. She asks him if he is okay, and Ellison says these are tears of joy because he has finally opened his own restaurant. The woman is pleased to learn that and introduces herself as Rain, a local. They make small talk, and Ellison tells Rain that he lives here with a friend who sleeps 18 hours a day, and will probably wake up in the evening. After that, Rain asks Ellison if he has sorted out his supply chain and pushes him to go to the butcher shop her husband, Noel, runs. Ellison thanks her, and she gives him extra warning because her husband sometimes behaves too angrily, but he thinks that he won't be any worse than the people he has met in the military. However, when he goes to the butcher shop, the man intimidates him and tells him that he is not going to sell any meat to him. Ellison behaves like a wimp, which should not be the case given that he served in the army for 15 years, but anyway, he tells the man about his restaurant. The butcher says that he has seen restaurant owners before too, and all they do is buy and stockpile the meat so they can sell it at a higher price later. Ellison tries to say he is not like the other guys, but the butcher is furious and tells him to get the hell out of his shop. Then suddenly, something hits his head, and he turns back to see his wife rain furious at him for behaving rudely towards a guest she sent. She scolds her henpecked husband, and Ellison wants to go home rather than see their family drama. In the end, Rain convinces her husband to sell some meat to Ellison. She then tells Ellison that her husband has trust issues because one of his friends from his mercenary days betrayed him in business. Soon, the butcher comes with some meat, and Ellison finds that it is the lowest quality meat available in the entire world. The butcher says he won't give good quality meat to someone he doesn't approve of and asks Ellison to prove his skill with this meat if he wants to get some good products. He hasn't noticed the cast iron pan coming towards his head again, and all I can say is rip. In advance, Noel keeps on trash-talking Ellison, but only in his imagination because he has been knocked out senseless by his wife. Ellison asks Rain if she wasn't being too harsh, but she says that he has a thick skull and won't take any damage. She apologizes to Ellison for her husband's conditions, but Ellison accepts it and says that he will cook for them. Rain is taken aback as Ellison invites her and her husband to his restaurant for dinner in the evening, and he doesn't even want good quality meat for that. Rain wants to tell Ellison that he is taking pork belly meat with him, which can't even be cooked properly, 
but he doesn't care. As a Korean chef aspirant, Ellison knows that pork belly can be turned into something delicious with the right technique. In this world, pork meat was the most easily available kind of meat, and the belly part was considered the most unfavorable cut. However, because of that, it was also very cheap, and Ellison finds that Noel gave him a good piece of meat despite his complaints. He immediately gets to work and starts grilling the pork belly with his fire magic. Meanwhile, Rain and Noel are heading to his restaurant, and she is constantly lashing out at her husband for treating Ellison rudely. She knows that he wants to check his sense of responsibility, but she also feels that Noel's way of doing things was too crude. But he is firm that he will see Ellison's attitude and cooking skills soon and judge him then. Back at the restaurant, Ellison is thinking about the time he saved his fellow soldiers from a monster attack using the magic thermal blade. Now, he is in the kitchen, trying to use the same magic to cook the meat properly. He makes a cut in the pork belly to allow marinade to infiltrate deep into it and also to make the exterior crispy. Just then, Rain and Noel arrive there, and Ellison tells them to wait for a few minutes. Noel is still acting arrogant, but Rain has brought her trusted pan to keep him in check. Inside the kitchen, Ellison places the whole piece of meat on a grilling pan and fries it in oil to achieve even cooking from all sides. After cooking it to perfection and seasoning it lightly, Ellison cuts it into pieces fit for serving to his guests. Then, he moves on to make a salad to balance the dish, and he decides not to do anything fancy because Noel seems hard to please. Ellison then plates the grilled pork belly and salad before taking it to his guests. Rain says it looks delicious, and Noel replies that it must just be the looks. As Rain takes the first bite of the grilled pork, she is sent into the wonderland of pigs by the delicious taste. She can't believe that Ellison made something so delicious just with the pork belly, and she praises the combination of the fatty meat and the refreshing salad. Rain says she loved Ellison's cooking and promises to supply more meat to him so that she can enjoy his cooking in the future. Ellison thanks her and then turns to Noel to ask his opinion, but he is stunned to find that the butcher had licked his plate clean and was still drooling. That's the fastest 180 I've ever seen. Ellison asks Noel if the food satisfied him, and he declares that it did not and asks him to bring more food immediately. Rain smacks him again as she tells him to be more polite, and Noel rubs his head before he tells Ellison that he passed his test. He claims that this was the best pork dish he ever tasted, and he tells Ellison that he can get the finest meat he wants now. Ellison is happy to hear that, and he shakes Noel's hand, realizing that he has got a butcher now, and he thinks that it is enough to consider that his first day of business is successful. One week passes after that, and Ellison's shop quickly attracts more customers, all of whom ask for pork belly. They compliment his cooking and say they will come again soon. As Ellison starts cleaning up the kitchen, he realizes that he is running low on salt and condiments. In this world, even simple spices are very rare and expensive, and their quality is also not as good as that in the real world. However, Ellison has a way to deal with both problems in one go. He places a gold coin on a magic circle and uses the summoning magic that allows him to summon objects from the modern world. Ellison accidentally invented this spell as he was trying to create a spell that would send him back to his world, but it proved helpful in strange ways. However, the magic takes a lot out of him, and he is exhausted just by summoning a few boxes and bottles of ingredients. He doesn't even need to use the gold coin, but since he is a nice guy, he sends it over because he doesn't want to steal from wherever the products are coming from. Ellison had experimented with his spell a lot, but he could not find a way to return to his world. Moreover, he could not bring any fresh products like vegetables or meat here and had to be content only with things that were processed. As Ellison is sitting exhausted after the summoning, he decides to take a break by drinking the beer he summoned a few days ago. However, the greatest shock of his life awaits him as he opens the fridge and finds that the beer is missing. He immediately knows whose fault it is and calls out the name of his friend Lauren who is sleeping carefreely after chugging down half a dozen cans of beer. Ellison goes to her room and smacks her awake, asking why she drank all the beer without telling him and also telling her to at least clean up after herself. Lauren replies that it is because he did not share any of the delicious meals he made the last time with her. She was angry when she found the empty plates, and this was her revenge. As for the cleaning, she claims that a black dragon like her shouldn't need to do any cleaning, as that was the work of the lower life forms. Allison is furious and smacks her again, telling her to peel onions and organize her room. Lauren cries as she says that she is a dragon, and Ellison recalls how he first met her when she was a young dragon who had lost her parents because of the war. He found her crying and could not leave her like that, so he took her along, and she transformed into a human to live with him. 
Lauren has lived for centuries, but Dragon's development is slow, and that is why she is still too immature. She is crying because of the onions, but as Ellison promises to make her a hamburger steak for dinner if she completes her work in time, Lauren is very happy and starts working with enthusiasm. Soon, Noel arrives at the restaurant, looking quite gloomy, and asks for alcohol and snacks. Ellison goes to his kitchen and takes out a bottle of vodka, but he rebottles it to make it look like it was made in this world. He presents the pork belly and vodka combination to Noel, who says that he doesn't want water but alcohol. Ellison just tells him to have a sip, and as Noel takes a shot before eating the dish, he finds that it tastes quite good. Even as he praises the food, Noel looks serious and asks Ellison to keep bringing the vodka. He gets seriously drunk, and as Ellison tells him to go home for today, he loudly declares that he has to get drunk today. Ellison is surprised and asks what is happening, and Noel sadly remarks that he thinks Rain is probably cheating on him. That's got to hurt. Ellison is shocked and asks Noel to elaborate, and he talks about how his wife dresses up nicely a couple of times a month, and then goes out, claiming that she needs some fresh air. He claims that this continued for several months before he decided to secretly follow her and found that she was meeting up with an old colleague from their mercenary days. Noel gets furious as he says that the man was his best friend back in the day, who suddenly vanished after their marriage. Now, he is getting close to her, and even today she has gone out to meet him. He claims that he cannot face the truth alone because he still loves Rain and cannot live without her. He asks Ellison what he should do now, and Ellison asks him to leave it to him. He assures Noel that Rain isn't the type of person to cheat, and he wants to see things for himself. Ellison dresses up as the Archmage and tells Lauren to stop peeling onions and join him because they have another job. They go to the city and find a crowded restaurant, where RMC finds the nervous Rain meeting up with a white-haired man, who he thinks is the backstabbing best friend. Ellison asks Lauren to use her dragon senses to listen to their conversation and promises to give her two hamburgers as a reward. Lauren snoops in on their conversation and recites it for Ellison. Rain asks the man named Ment if the right time to tell things to her husband has not yet come. Ment is also nervous, as Rain says Noel is getting suspicious of them, but he doesn't want to meet him because he knows Noel won't be pleased to learn that he helped him. After hearing this, Ellison assumes that it is not an affair, and he immediately leaves, saying he has heard enough. Lauren asks him where he is going, and Ellison just tells her to return home and wait for him. He goes straight to Rain and her friend and tells them that Noel has seriously misunderstood them. They are both taken aback, and Ellison tells them the whole story. Back at the restaurant, Noel has turned into my friend, who always misses his ex whenever he gets drunk, when Ment and Rain pay him a visit. He is furious as he tells them that they look good together, and Rain tries to tell him that he is misunderstood. Noel's rage explodes as he asks what he could misunderstand. He rushes to punch Ment because he trusted him, and Ment doesn't even bother to move from the way of his powerful punch. However, Ellison saves his face from being crushed with a magic barrier. He then tells Ment that letting Noel hit him won't do anyone any good, and he must resolve this situation properly. Ellison calmly spills the tea as he says that Ment was the one who gave Noel money to open his butcher shop without letting him know. His words stun Noel, who can only ask Ellison to elaborate while he goes to the kitchen with his basket of fresh ingredients. He tells him to talk it out with everyone while he prepares something for them to eat. Ellison plans to cook something that can help with Noel's headache, and using the bear meat that Rain gave him, he decides to cook a delicious hot pot. He is done cooking soon and hopes that the situation outside has calmed down as well. Outside, Noel is aghast to learn that Ment gave them funds to set up their store. Rain sighs as she claims that after he was scammed, Ment lent them his life savings to restore their shop. She claims that now that they are doing good business, she was meeting with him every month to repay the money. Noel still cannot digest this information as he believes that the money came from the knights, who caught the scammer and returned money to all of the victims. Ment tells Noel that he couldn't give him the money directly because he was too proud to accept help like that but now he regrets doing him a favor in such shady fashion. As Noel is about to interrogate him about why he would take such a big risk when he had his own plans after retirement, Ellison interrupts their conversation with food, claiming that it isn't good to let it overcook. He serves his guests the hot pot, and Ment is amazed by the taste. He offers a bowl to Noel, who is initially hesitant but then realizes the deliciousness of the soup. Ment takes this chance to remind him of one of their battles, where Noel got stabbed with a sword to save his life. Ment remembers that battle vividly because they were facing a lack of food and could only eat watery soup. One day, he hunted a wild bear for meat and collapsed right as he brought it into the tent. They tried their best to cook it into something palatable, and even that shabby soup felt like the best dish in the world at that moment. 
As Noel hears this, he gets emotional about remembering that time. Menthon says that he never had any plans after his retirement that would stop him from helping his friend. Noel starts crying as he apologizes to his friend for doubting him, and Ellison thinks that his work here is done. While his customers enjoy their dinner and a cathartic conversation, Lauren bothers Ellison to cook hamburgers for him. He tells her to wait till the customers are gone, but she throws a fit like she is a toddler. Just then, Ment comes there, and Ellison shuts Lauren's mouth to talk to him. Ment praises his cooking and then asks if he can cook for a party for his mercenary party before they leave on a big mission. Ellison is stunned to hear this offer, and he readily accepts this golden opportunity. However, he makes the mistake of choosing chicken meat for the menu and regrets it as he tries to catch a wild chicken. In this world, the chickens were rare, and on top of that, they were even more agile and faster than in the real world. Ellison fails to catch one even after running behind it for an entire day, and he feels like setting the entire forest on fire to get his hands on one. A few days ago, he visited Noel to buy some chicken meat, but he told him that it was too rare and expensive to be found in his shop. But as Ellison hurt his pride by saying that he was just a mediocre butcher, Noel told him that some chickens had been spotted in the Lemon Forest. Following his advice, Ellison came to the Lemon Forest, only to be mocked by the chicken who was running him ragged. Ellison gives up and asks Lauren for help, and she reminds him of his promise that he will do the dishes for the entire month if he fails to capture a chicken. Lauren uses her stare to immediately kill the chicken without giving it a chance to run, and as Ellison collects it, she remarks that he would also be as useless as a chicken if he had not eaten a dragon's heart. Wait, what? Apparently, it's not time for the story to be told right now, and Ellison says that eating the dragon's heart gave him a great boost. But right now, he wants Lauren to focus on hunting more chickens for him. Soon, Lauren relaxes while drinking beer as Ellison preps the chickens. He asks Lauren to not finish everything because he needs the beer for his guests that are coming this evening because the dish he is preparing really goes well with beer. At night, Ment and his mercenary group assemble at the restaurant, and no one except his junior Milteen trusts his judgment regarding food. However, everyone makes fun of the boy for being a bootlicker who will find grass tasty if Ment says it is. Just then, Ellison comes there, and Ment introduces him to Milteen, who is quite eager to test out his food. Ellison proudly presents deep-fried chicken to them, and the mercenaries are shocked because catching a chicken was not easy even for professional hunters. Ellison tells them to eat it before it gets cold, and the taste of the fried chicken blows them away. Ellison realizes that he cannot work fast enough to serve food at all the tables quickly, so he asks Lauren to help him. But she gives him some snarky remarks about how she is a dragon who won't stoop so low as to serve humans, and she has done her part by catching all the chickens alone. Ellison has no other choice, so he decides to resort to emotional blackmailing. With a shaky voice, he reminds Lauren that she used to say that they would build a restaurant together, but now she has forgotten about doing that together. He sighs, saying that he will have to manage things on his own now, and asks Lauren to return to the Land of Dragons. This comes as a shock to the dragon girl, who immediately changes her mind. She says that serving humans can be an amusing game for a dragon like her, and Ellison smiles, realizing his plan succeeded. As Lauren serves the food, Ellison is busy in the kitchen, and after a few hours, the party is over. Lauren is exhausted, and Ellison commends her for her hard work before saying that they should also have some fried chicken with beer now. They relish the tastes of the modern dishes in the fantasy world, and then Ellison notices that Lauren has even cleaned the tables without him asking her to. He asks if she has matured a bit, and Lauren leans on his shoulder as she says that this is their restaurant. Ellison tries to take advantage of this emotional scene and asks Lauren if they can cancel the bet about him washing the dishes for a month, but she refuses to agree to that. What exactly is their relation? Meanwhile, a stranger is lurking outside the restaurant, and as Lauren notices him, she immediately hides behind Ellison. Ellison wonders what is happening, but then the stranger comes into the restaurant, saying that human cities are always disgusting, no matter how many times he visits, and Ellison realizes what is happening. His guest was the elder black dragon, Metadonna, who was visiting him in his human form. Ellison asks Metadonna what he is here for, and he first remarks that his restaurant business is doing well. He asks Lauren if she is fine here, and she meekly replies that she has no complaints. Ellison confronts the elder dragon and asks him if he is here for Lauren, and then reminds him that it was decided to let him care for her. Even Lauren does not want to go with Metadonna, as she believes he has abandoned her before. He remarks that he never abandoned her and was only late to come to her. He talks about the sin her mother committed against her own race, but Ellison does not want to hear about it. 
he reminds Metadonna that the dragons have promised that he will have custody of Lorin, and they are a race that values their promises over everything else. A cruel smile spreads on the elder dragon's face as he says that even in promises, the ones that are made first have priority over those made later. Metadonna tells Ellison about a rule among the dragons that mustn't be broken. He says that when black dragons turn 800 years old, they are deemed adults, and by that time, they must have their own lives or they will have to head back to the land of dragons. He says that Lauren no longer has a lair because she was using her mother's basement and it got destroyed. The next year, she turns 800 years old, and if she doesn't have a lair by then, she will have to move back to the land of dragons, following their law. Lauren is scared as Metadonna declares that breaking the law will mean war, and Ellison tells him to bring it on. Metadonna is furious to hear this, and even Lauren doesn't think it is the right idea. The elder dragon is about to transform into his real form as he tells Ellison to not look down on dragons, even if he has eaten the Lord's heart. Lauren also stops Ellison from starting a war for her, but he stupidly replies that he wasn't even talking about the war, he just wants to help her make a new dragon lair. Both Metadonna and Lauren are stunned to hear this, but Ellison thinks that one year is enough time to create a dragon's lair and they have enough treasure to fill it. Even Metadonna is stupefied upon hearing this because he never expected Ellison to use this method, and he cannot find a fault in it. He teleports away, saying that he will return in a year, and Ellison wishes that he doesn't return ever. After that, he starts helping Lauren make a dragon lair. A lair is technically the cave in which a dragon lives, with a magnificent interior decorated with dazzling jewels. Obviously, it takes a lot of time and effort to create a lair, and Ellison soon realizes that he challenged the elder dragon too hastily. Because the rumors about his restaurant selling chicken spread throughout the area, the customers were starting to flood in, and he got too busy with them to even think about creating a lair. He is exhausted and decides to cut down on the number of his customers. That's the first time I am hearing about a shop owner wanting less customers. He soon takes Noel along to the Lemon Forest, where the chickens are found in abundance. Noel is shocked as Ellison declares his plan to sell chickens to him, and he can sell their meat for a great profit. He only wants 50% of the profit, even though he is hunting all the chickens, because that will send all the unnecessary traffic to Noel's shop. Noel is not so sure about it. But Ellison tells him to not think much and rake in the profit as it comes. They make the deal, and then Ellison recalls that chickens are migratory birds and change their habitat every few years. To stop them from doing that, he creates a giant barrier surrounding the forest so that they cannot leave. Noel is stunned and asks Ellison how he can use such powerful magic, but Ellison replies that he is just a magician who retired from the war to start his restaurant, and nothing more. He asks the butcher to keep his magic skills a secret. The very next day, Ellison's plan bears fruit, and his restaurant is completely empty. He is the first person to laugh that he has no customers today, and even Lauren thinks that he is a bit weird for that. Ellison sheds a tear as he says that he wishes that at least some customers still came, but now they have time to build a lair. Lauren is happy to hear this and asks Ellison if he will live with her after they build the lair, but Ellison has no plans to do this. Lauren is upset and declares that she doesn't need a lair if Ellison isn't going to stay with her, and she thinks that they should instead wage war on the Black Dragon family. Ellison tells her to calm down because they are going to construct the lair nearby so that she doesn't need to worry about being away from him. Ellison takes Lauren to the hill directly below the restaurant, which is owned by him since the property here is quite cheap. Ellison plans to dig in from a side while stabilizing the hill with a barrier so that it does not collapse. Lauren likes the plan and says that they should get to work immediately, but Ellison leaves all the digging to her, saying that he can't leave his restaurant vacant for too long. Lauren is shocked, but she has no choice but to work alone. Meanwhile, Ellison goes to his restaurant and relaxes because there is no customer. However, he jinxes his rest by talking about it, and a boy comes there and asks him if this is the famous restaurant. Ellison replies that he doesn't know about Famous, but it certainly is a restaurant. The boy asks Ellison if he serves chicken here, and he tells him to go to Noel's butcher shop if he wants chicken. However, the boy does not want to do that and settles for anything else on the menu instead. Ellison goes to the kitchen, assuming that the boy is a noble's son with difficult circumstances, but who is he to judge him? He decides to make hamburgers for him since they are liked by kids, given how much Lauren likes them. He creates the patty from scratch and then even puts an egg in the sandwich and presents it to the boy. The boy is excited to taste it and about to take a bite when his servants barge into the restaurant looking for him. The boy's expressions turn horrid as the servants ask him what he is doing in a place like this, and they even go as far as to say he might get food poisoning by eating in a place like this. Ellison won't let this slide, and he confronts the head servant, 
who informs him that the boy is De'Aaron Grake, the son of the Baron who rules over the city. Ellison replies that he doesn't care about the customer's background and that he will serve the same food to the Baron as he will to a commoner, infuriating the stuck-up servant. De'Aaron stops them from fighting and then pays with a gold coin before leaving, disappointed that he couldn't even get to taste the burger. Ellison is worried about the boy now, but then Lurin returns to the restaurant, claiming that her hands ache from digging the ground all day. She wants Ellison to dig now, but he says that he will dig it tomorrow because right now he needs to do something else. Lurin complains that she is hungry, but Ellison replies that he will cook something for her when he returns from an important task. He looks at the coin De'Aaron left behind and claims that since he has already been paid, he cannot leave the job half done. He declares that he will go to the Baron's castle to finish his job. In the castle, De'Aaron is gloomy when suddenly a magic portal opens inside his room. Ellison and Lurin appear out of it and greet him, and the boy is terrified. Before he can ask anything, Ellison presents him with the hamburger he couldn't eat before. De'Aaron forgets all his worries as soon as he sees food, just like me, and thanks Ellison for doing this for him. He drools as he says that they can talk after he eats it, when suddenly, the head servant knocks at the door, asking the boy if everything is fine because there were some unfamiliar voices coming from his room. De'Aaron is terrified, and now Ellison is getting irritated by the nosy servant who won't even let his master eat a hamburger. The boy asks what he should do, and Ellison tells him to simply command the servants to leave, as he is the Baron's son. However, De'Aaron has no confidence in himself because his servants have never listened to him before, and they always ignore him. The servants are banging at the door, and Lauren can't stand the wimpy kid in front of her anymore. She suddenly shouts at the servants in De'Aaron's voice, telling them that he doesn't need them and they should go back immediately. De'Aaron is shocked by her mimicking abilities and fears that the servants won't obey even then. But surprisingly, the head servant accepts this order and leaves. Darren can't believe it, and Ellison tells him that his servants will obey him if he stops being a wimp. The boy is so moved that he falls on Ellison's feet and begs him to become his teacher. He then tells his life story. He was born as the Baron's son, but his mother died while giving birth to him, and his father remarried. His stepmother was strict, but she cared about him as the Lord's son. However, after his father fell ill, she stopped looking out for him and started controlling his actions through the servants. Ever since then, Darren felt that he would not be respected or treated well, even if he inherited the title of Baron. But after today's events, his thoughts have changed. Now, he asks the stupefied Ellison to teach him to be a confident man and a good lord. Ellison realizes that the only thing the boy is lacking is confidence, and he tells him to look others in the eye when he talks to them. He also asks him to take responsibility for his words and actions if he wants to become a good lord. With that brief lesson, Ellison teleports away, telling Darren to enjoy the burger and visit the restaurant whenever he has time. The boy is still thinking about his words, and when he takes a bite of the burger, he finds it too delicious. A realization suddenly dawns on him, and he realizes that being a good lord means making such delicious food available to everyone. He is a bit out of line, but not wrong at all. Meanwhile, Ellison and Lauren come to their restaurant, where she asks him why he is making so much effort for a complete stranger. Ellison shows her the gold coin and tells her that he must work hard enough to give his customers the service for what they have paid. The gold coin was 500 times more costly than the price of the hamburger, and that is why he needed to do something of equal value for him. Ellison is happy that he got paid so much, and he hopes that Darren frequents their shop and spends a lot of money. But Lurin is not happy because that would mean fewer hamburgers for her. Meanwhile, on the boundary where the town meets the forest, there is a clinic run by a skilled doctor that draws in a huge crowd. However, the reason for the huge queue is not the skills of the doctor, but the fact that she is a beautiful elf woman. While some people, like Rain, go to her to treat their injuries, most of the men are there only to hit her. Perverts. One day, the elf doctor Alina tells Rain that she plans to return to her hometown because she does not want to live in this place because of the constant harassment by perverted men. Rain is shocked because she values Alina's skills as a doctor, and the elf also says that she wants to treat people here. But the negative aspects of staying here are more than the positives. Rain realizes what she means because even her husband has many negatives, but she loves him for his positive qualities. She tells Alina to find more things she loves about this town so that she can keep on staying here, and she suggests she try out Ellison's restaurant because it has the most delicious food in the world. Meanwhile, Ellison is digging to create Lauren's lair when Noel and his nephew Nellian arrive there. After inquiring about the hole, they say that they have something important to talk about, and they plan to discuss it over food. Noel also tells Ellison about an elf doctor who is visiting his restaurant right now on Rain's recommendation. 
Ellison thinks that he should head back to the kitchen now, and he talks with Noel about the elf. He replies that the doctor was a beauty, and all the perverts in the town ran to her clinic to get themselves treated, even if they got pricked by a thorn. He believes that this is why elves hate humans, and Ellison replies that not all elves are the same. As they are talking about how elves are a proud race, he enters the restaurant and finds the elf doctor on her knees in front of Lurin, who is releasing her draconic aura. Alina calls Lurin a great being and apologizes for her rudeness while sweating buckets, and the arrogant Lurin says she will forgive her if she is willing to become her servant for life. Ellison is dumbfounded upon seeing this situation, and as Lurin proudly displays the elf servant she got, he smacks the hell out of her for treating their customer so badly. A few moments earlier, Alina had entered the restaurant and met Lurin there. Lurin remarked that elves are really pretty, and Alina said that Lurin was also a pretty young lady. The dragon girl got furious on hearing that and displayed her real power to Alina, saying that even if she is young for her species, she is still older than her. That was what made Alina weak in her knees, and she fell to the ground right as Ellison entered the restaurant. After teaching a lesson to Lurin, Ellison nervously invites Noel and his nephew in. Inside the restaurant, Alina is flabbergasted as she sees Lurin cry after being hit by Ellison. She has no doubt that the girl is a dragon, and it is common sense that dragons should never be annoyed because they are the strongest species that can destroy entire cities if they feel like it. However, Ellison was treating a dragon like a kid, and she wonders who the hell he is. Suddenly, Ellison apologizes to Alina on Lauren's behalf, and she nervously asks him if he is a human. Ellison affirms and then tells Alina that his story of living with a dragon is quite complicated, so he just wants her to keep it a secret from everyone else. Alina readily promises to keep it a secret because she does not want to die after enraging a dragon, and Ellison realizes that Lauren really did a number on her. He then realizes that she is the elf doctor Rain recommended and thinks that they have already created a bad first impression in front of her. Alina then tells Ellison that she can't digest meat at all, so she asks him to cook anything that is just vegetables. Ellison pities the girl who didn't even choose to be vegan, and he goes to the kitchen as Noel asks him for the usual pork belly. Ellison thinks that there are a lot of good dishes without meat, but the best thing he can think of right now is tomato pasta. He adds chopped onions and mushrooms to the tomato sauce while he puts the pasta to boil in another utensil, and then puts them together to present an appetizing-looking dish to Alina. I can't stop drooling. Alina is amazed by how good the dish looks, and Ellison assures her that it does not have any meat in it. She starts eating the pasta while Ellison gets busy cooking for Noel and his nephew. Melian doesn't look too eager to try the pork belly and Ellison turns around to see if at least Alina is enjoying her dish. He finds her devouring the pasta like it is the last thing she will eat. She can't believe that vegan food could be so good because, until now, she has been eating only vegetables. She is like those American vegans who discover the existence of spices for the first time. She is overjoyed after she finishes her food and exclaims that it was the best meal ever. Ellison is stunned by her undignified reaction, and even Alina realizes that she let her internal thoughts win. She blushes as Ellison hands her a handkerchief. He asks her if she doesn't go to other restaurants, and Alina replies that she attracts too much attention in crowded places, so she tends to eat only boiled vegetables. She also thought that vegetarian food was boring, but after eating at Ellison's restaurant, she changed her mind. She gives five stars to the food but deducts one star for Lauren's behavior, but Ellison is content with this. Suddenly, they heard Noel shouting at his nephew to repeat what he just said, and he says that his mother is not his real mother. On the other hand, Nellian's mother, who has apparently adopted him, goes to the mines where he works. She is worried because he left the house without eating earlier, and asks the guard if she can enter the mines to give her son his tiffin. Even though the guard has not seen Nellian clock in for work, he lets the woman venture into the mines. Back at the restaurant, Noel asks Nellian who told him that he was adopted, and he furiously states that it is not important right now because he was fooled for 20 long years. While Ellison feels guilty about listening to their story, he and Alina note every tiny detail shamelessly. Noel says that Nellian should be grateful to his mother, even if she did not give birth to him. She raised him well even after his father passed away when he was just a kid, and he should realize how amazing she is. Nellian says that he knows it, but then his face twists as he says that this morning, he was so furious at learning that he was adopted that he cursed out at his mother when she gave him his lunchbox. Noel is furious upon hearing this and grabs his nephew by the collar, and Ellison gets up to break their fight. However, even before he can do anything, Rain comes running to the door and tells Nellian to hurry out of the mines because they have collapsed and his mother is trapped inside. 
Everyone is shocked to hear this, and Rain says that the woman went into the mines to find her son. Nelian is devastated upon hearing this and runs to the mines, with Noel deciding to follow him. Alina volunteers to join them because there are bound to be many injured people at the mine right now who will need her help, and Ellison also wants to tag along. They go to the cave, where Nelian is throwing a tantrum about going into the cave to find his mom, and the guards stop him because it is too dangerous. Ellison asks him to calm down and promises that he and Alina will find his mother. The guards tell them it is too dangerous to go inside, but Ellison assures them that Alina is a doctor who can save many lives inside the cave. They enter the mine, and Alina tells Ellison that he does not need to risk his life to accompany her. However, he soon proves his usefulness as he stops a bunch of falling rocks using his magic shield. Ellison says that he is a retired mage, and then asks Alina why she came so far from the elf territory to treat humans. Ellison says he had an elf friend too, and there is always some greater reason for elves to leave their villages to go out and help others while risking the crude actions of humans. Just as Alina is about to give an answer, Ellison notices a fork in the mine and decides to use his magic to search for survivors quickly. He summons spirits that locate the survivors, and Alina treats their injuries as fast as she can. Ellison also uses his magic to free them from rubble and quickly sends them flying outside. Soon, Alina is exhausted, and Ellison finally locates Nellian's mom. She is in a terrible condition, and Alina says that even if she uses a strong recovery spell on her, the results are not guaranteed. She uses her strongest spell, and luckily, it works. Soon, the woman is out of the cave, but she is still unconscious. As Noel comforts the crying rain, Nellian sits next to his mother, consumed by the guilt of treating her poorly. Ellison assures him that she is not in critical condition thanks to Alina's spell, who is too tired to even explain her injuries properly. Nellian looks into the basket and finds that she was here to give him his lunch after he treated her rudely earlier. He is angry at himself, and suddenly his mom wakes up and calls his name. Nellian cries as he holds her hand and apologizes for what he did earlier. He says that he was scared that the rude words he spoke to her in the morning might become the last thing he said to her. She starts crying too, saying that she was glad that he was calling her mom again and also because he was not in the mine. I'm not crying. The onion cutting ninjas are in my room. As Ellison and Alina watch their touching reunion, she tells him that she also wanted to return home only a little while ago because she was disappointed in humans. However, after tasting Ellison's food and helping people who really needed her help, she was reminded of the reason she came here. She always wanted to help humans who had much shorter lives, but they expressed their emotions more freely. Now, she wants to stay at the town to do her work earnestly, but just as she says that, she collapses because of a lack of energy. Alina blushes as Ellison holds her, and realizing that she is exhausted, he starts pumping his magic energy into her. Alina is surprised because he used an elven technique, and Ellison tells her that he learned it from his elf friend, whom he told her about. Ellison says that the name of his friend was Biden, and Alina is shocked because Biden was the hero of elves. As they head back, she pesters him with questions about how he knew that guy, and Ellison just laughs, saying that he used to be a big shot mage back in the day. With this, the video ends. Tell us what you thought about it in the comments, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.